The flight of the hummingbird has within it several lessons for engineers and aerodynamicists. The fact is that one cannot explain the flight of insects and small birds by using simplified lift models as they always show very little lift is produced when the deflection of air is considered. Simple lift theory fails to explain how with very small energy expenditure these small creatures are able to achieve hovering flight. Note that the way us humans achieve hovering is a very energy intensive process. On the other hand, to allocate low energy investment for big gains is a universal rule in nature. And therefore, in this video, we will look at the flight dynamics of a hummingbird and flight formation of a flock of geese and how that can be translated into designs and measures which can save energy expenditure of our aircraft. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we aim to bring for you information regarding sustainable air travel. Subscribe to get all our updates. In 2011, AeroVironment, a defense contractor with headquarters in Virginia, produced a mechanized hummingbird that stunned the world. The ground for this was laid by DARPA who funded the project. They had a set of objectives which were all met by the Nano Hummingbird. These objectives included hover endurance for over 8 minutes, flying up to 11 miles per hour from a hovering position and returning to hovering after forward flight. That is the ability to speed up and stop in midair. Objectives also included precision hover flight within a virtual 2 meter diameter sphere for about a minute. Furthermore, the aircraft had to look like a bird and its wings had to be shaped like a bird. After painstaking engineering, the Nano Hummingbird was produced. It was a tiny aircraft shaped like a hummingbird and weighed only 19 grams, which is less than the weight of a AA battery. Remarkably, this small weight included the systems required for flight, the batteries, the motors, and the communication systems, as well as the video camera payload. The device was bigger and heavier than a typical real hummingbird, but it is smaller and lighter than the largest hummingbird varieties. This small and yet powerful device could be deployed to perform reconnaissance and surveillance in urban environments or on battlefields. It can perch on window sills or on power lines or enter buildings to observe its surrounding, relaying camera views back to its operator. The question is, how could the Nano Hummingbird, given its small weight and size, fly for over 8 minutes while using energy for relaying data-heavy visual information? The reason for the small amount of energy expenditure during flying is because it recycles some of the energy that it imparts to the surrounding air. We need to dive a bit deep here to understand this. To achieve hovering, we normally push the air downwards. This gives a force in the opposite direction, which provides the lift force. However, the process consumes a lot of energy because the kinetic energy that is imparted to the air is normally lost to the environment. In some cases, we can see the reduction in energy consumption if we capture some of the energy back. This happens in the case of a hovercraft where a flexible skirting captures the air bouncing back from the ground. This also happens in a wing in ground aircraft where the ground effect comes into play. In simple words, when we capture some of the kinetic energy that was used for deflecting air, we make the process of getting and remaining airborne more efficient. In a hummingbird and in insects, the principle is the same, but the question is, how do they do it while remaining relatively so far away from the ground? The simple answer is that they don't create a straight downward draft with their downstroke of the wing. Instead, they create a vortex. This vortex formation not only gives an upward lift force during the downstroke portion of their wing flap, but also provides the lift during the subsequent upstroke as the wing moves slightly backwards and then upwards to capture the vortex. Thus, the insect and the hummingbird surf on the vortex that they themselves create. It has to be understood though that tiny, slow-moving vortices are a lot easier to control at a smaller scale than at a larger scale. For the hummingbird and insects, the viscosity of the air has a much larger bearing than objects that are of a bigger scale. And hence, they can manipulate the air around them with much better control. 
This is also the reason why we don't see the hummingbird and insect-like flying mechanism in larger animals. While we can make the nano hummingbird, but can we make a larger aircraft with not a single pair, but perhaps hundreds of small flapping wings? We can put that question aside and let's have a look at another method in which larger birds serve vortices. You must have noticed the flying formation of geese. Scientists have ascertained that using this V formation, migratory birds conserve energy. Birds flying in this formation are able to travel 70% more distance compared to flying solo. While drafting or slipstreaming is a well-known phenomenon in cycling and in motorsports where the energy is conserved by reducing drag that is done by directly moving into the low pressure zone created by the object moving in the front. The energy saved by migratory birds is different. This phenomenon involves vortex surfing. The vortices that are shed by the tips of the wings of the bird flying up front are captured by the birds flying behind. The tip vortices also spread out as they go further downstream and this is the reason for the V formation. This phenomenon got NASA interested and so in the early 2000s, NASA got an F-18 to fly in the wake of a DC-8 and found a whopping 29% fuel saving. A further experiment in 2001 which was part of NASA's Dryden Autonomous Formation Flight Project measured maximum fuel savings of 18% for an F-18 flying in the vortex of another F-18. In the year 2013, the Air Force Research Laboratories Surfing Aircraft Vortices for Energy Project showed 10 to 15% fuel savings on two Boeing C-17 Globemaster 3s. In 2017, NASA measured 8 to 10% lower fuel flow with two Gulfstream 3 aircraft on wake surfing test flights. In 2018, the Eco Demonstrator, a Boeing 777F freighter from FedEx, had its fuel consumption reduced by 5 to 10 percent just by surfing vortices. It has to be mentioned here that in order to benefit from vortex surfing, the trailing aircraft needs to be at a specific distance from the leading aircraft. Vortices create both upwash and downwash as they move through the air. In case of a C-17, the trailing aircraft was 3,000 feet behind the leading one. In the case of a passenger aircraft, it was found that the trail aircraft stabilizes approximately one nautical mile behind and 500 feet to the left or right of the lead aircraft. You may have noted that fuel saving occurs only for the trailing aircraft and therefore in the future, if fuel saving has to be made, then flights would need to be paired. If the overall fuel saving is let's say 10%, then for the two aircraft, it is splits to 5% each. This begs the question, are tandem flights the future of aviation? There are nine direct flights from London to Dubai every day from different airports. Is it worth looking into 5% fuel saving just by synchronizing flight schedules? What do you think about it? The benefit increases if there are more than two aircraft in the formation. For example, if there are three aircraft, then the benefit would increase to 8% for all three. Military aircraft can certainly benefit from these findings as it suggests that formation flying can give them a greater range for a mission. Formation flying can similarly be used by fixed wing delivery drones to cover longer distance. So what do you think about vortex surfing? Do let us know how this phenomena can be used in the aircraft technology. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.